and uh, I'd like you to give a big round of applause for Barry Trower. I'd just like to say, please, that um, I work for free, and any money you put in the bucket doesn't come my way. It goes towards the cost of your life. And I'll just explain myself very, very briefly for those who, who don't know me. I started studying microwaves in 1959 for the military. I'm military trained in microwave warfare. My first degree, I studied, specialised in nuclear and atomic physics. Um, and I concentrated, my dissertation was on absorption of the far end of one of the microwave bands. On my second degree, I studied thinking processes, environmental influences on thinking processes, including how microwaves affect the brain. I also have a teaching diploma in human physiology. Uh, I'm, a, I'm actually a local boy. I, I live just down the road from here. I, I see you as neighbours. I used to live down the road at Dartington for many, many years, and I taught in Torquay, and I taught A-level physics and maths and some physiology uh, just at Ashburton. Uh, during the Cold War, I spent 11 years talking to captured spies uh, who were trained in microwave warfare when microwave was then, as it is now, being used to cause harm. I'm the author of the confidential report on Tetra Airwave for the Police Federation of England and Wales. I also wrote the higher confidential reports for the senior officers. <clears throat> and since I did that, nobody has left me alone. Uh, I travel the world, I talk to royalty, governments, groups, uh, anyone that cares to listen, and then I'm here today. It's as simple as that. Why, I think anyone who puts Wi-Fi into a school should be locked up for the rest of their life. I really do. I think they're not fit to walk on the surface of this planet because they haven't looked at the research and whatever incentive they have, it is not worth the genetic problems that parents are going to face with their children when they're born. And if you think of a single parent, a mother, who has a genetically deformed child, that that particular mother, mother will feel guilty because she gave birth. She will feel guilty and she will be worried every single second of every single day for her life. She will worry that the child won't marry. If the child can marry, she'll worry that the children will carry the disease, which they will. She will worry when she dies who will take care of them. So you are condemning both the family and the children uh, to a lifetime of absolute hell. <clears throat> and this is already published. It is available to look up. It's what I call intentional ignorance. They are offered some sort of incentive and they think, oh, this is going to be good. We'll have it. Now, the problem is, imagine you are a 15-year-old schoolgirl. All of the 400,000 eggs in your ovaries were with you at birth. They're not fully developed, but they're with you. They are 10 times more susceptible to radiation than all of the other DNA in the body. And scientists don't realize that. They don't read all of the papers as I do. So you have this highly susceptible genetic material which is going to make your children. And you are irradiating it because Wi-Fi's, they are transmitters as well as the routers, as well as the ones either side of you. 
they are all transmitting at this height through your ovaries. So you are risking the damage, the DNA damage of your child every time you sit down and you use Wi-Fi. And it's like saying, if I smoke a cigarette, which one will cause the damage? The answer is, I don't know. It could be the one today. <clears throat> so you now have a child that has a probability of being genetically damaged. But the real damage is when that child grows up, you have genetic material in your ovaries which could be damaged. Now, the real problem comes so you, you have a child that could be born genetically damaged, but the real problem comes when you become pregnant. If you are a teacher or a mature student and you become pregnant because the embryo inside your womb, in the first 100 days, all of those 400,000 eggs are forming in your embryo, your child's ovaries. <clears throat> so your child could be born with genetically damaged eggs. And the main thing about the eggs in the ovaries of your child is that they have absolutely no protection. It, it hasn't been developed yet. We have a natural protection against microwaves. It was developed since the Stone Age against thunderstorms and massive amounts of radiation coming into our body. But in the, your embryo, your uterus, in the fetus, uh, where your child is developing for the first 100 days, in the ovaries, the eggs do not have that protection. So they are at maximum risk from radiation. And for the first month or so, you wouldn't even know you were pregnant. You wouldn't even be taking precautions. That is the main danger area. So you give birth to a daughter, but her ovaries are now contaminated. She may be normal, she may be genetically damaged, but her ovaries are at the most risk. So when your daughter grows up and she becomes pregnant and has a baby, this is where one of these eggs will be fertilized and come out. So the real damage here is your grandchildren. That is where it is going to show most. And we already see this in animals that have reproductive cycles of a year or two years or three years. We're already seeing this and it has been published by veterinary schools and vets and scientists. So we know this happens. And it's also been documented uh, in the Cold War when women were deliberately microwaved. So we know it does happen. The documents are there. <laughs> And what you're risking by putting Wi-Fi into schools is the future generations of all of these girls. But it gets worse because this particular DNA, the mitochondrial DNA inside you and the DNA inside you, the mitochondrial DNA, you can trace unchanged to your mother, her mother, her mother, right the way back to the beginning of the human race in Africa, the Stone Age, you can trace your ancestors, if you could, right back to the very first lady. It is unchanged, the mitochondria. And that is being unchanged in your children, which means if you damage it, your child could be genetically damaged, then her child, and her child, and her child, forever. You are condemning the future generations of every single child until 
there are no more lines left in the female in your family. You, you must stop. Some, a female must stop producing children for this to stop. <clears throat> so it, when you put Wi-Fi in schools, what you're saying is, for the sake of a little bit of money that saves getting a workman in to drill holes through the walls to, to feed cable, because it's cheaper, we're just going to put Wi-Fi in, but you can have genetically damaged children for the rest of your family's career. That's what we're saying. It is now possible to genetically change bacteriums and virus, genetically change them. What has been developed now is if bacterium, they can lay, and, and yeasts, they can lay in the soil for hundreds of years in a dormant stage. Um, and it's known by grave diggers or people who dig up old graves that it's possible when light comes on the bacterium to regenerate the bubonic plague that's been laying in the ground for several hundred years. It only wants that particular frequency and bang, it, it, it's active again. <clears throat> you don't need more than two brain cells to work out where you go from here. Virus are neither dead nor alive. They in, inhabit hosts. If I put a virus inside a dormant bacteria that I know I can spring to life. I go to Norway on a holiday or Denmark or Sweden. I just spread the virus around the forests with the dormant bacteria and I come back. And I can wait if I like a hundred years, 200 years or two hours, makes no difference to me. And then all I have to do with harp or a similar device is put the frequency, the microwave frequency off the ionosphere down onto Norway. Whenever I feel like it, the virus will spring to life because their host has sprung to life. This is where we are. So countries can now, just by introducing bacteriums and viruses and whatever you they can totally devastate uh, the economic possibilities of another country. It's been shown that a child using a cell phone, just an ordinary school child, if the child uses the phone for just two minutes, the brain waves can take up to two hours to return to normal. Two hours. And that's been published. Now, in those two hours, the child's brain is not acting as it should and it could demonstrate itself in a number of ways. For instance, if, you, if the child were in school and made a quick call from the playground, it could be lack of concentration, hyperactivity, bad behavior, it could be anything like that. And that would slowly ease off over two hours. Now that's just from two minutes. Now, if a child makes a phone call every couple of hours, the brain is going to be entrained permanently. 
and it's already been published by the industry that a child uh, using microwaves just before bed will have his or her sleep totally disrupted by entrainment. I cited, I think, 200 schools in Europe where a transmitter had been put in or near the playground where they had leukaemia clusters. Um, some of our own MPs here have stood up in Parliament to say that they have 11 children under the age of 11 with leukaemia around a transmitter or 18 children. I mean, it, it's so. I mean, cancers are reaching epidemic proportions. There are lots of different types of cancers coming up now. I would think, I know in China, they've just had a 3,000% increase in parotid gland cancer, which is the side of the face where you would hold a mobile. Uh, we're getting cancers of the eye coming up. Obviously, brain tumours. In fact, brain tumours are quite quite enormous now in, in terms of numbers that uh, I read a report and I read this out in Canada last year um, people are so worried about the numbers of brain tumours that they've re-diagnosed 10,000 brain tumours as endocrine cancers to take them off the statistics and I do know that in the European Union, uh, we have been told that cancers are at epidemic proportions. Uh, and we're talking generally cancers between the ear and the brain. 